Oh yeah, uh, Petman QC and his happy little games are the cream of the crop. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, pro wrestling. Ever since I was 10 years old watching Hulk Hogan and Rowdy Rowdy Piper on MTV, I was as hooked as a crackhead to a crack pipe. I just can't get enough of that wonderful stuff and Monday nights and Friday nights have now become a ritual in the Patman QC household. With the advent of AEW, Wednesday nights have also become must-see TV for me and many others around the world. Now I don't know if it's the soap opera aspect, the hard-hitting action, or just watching big, sweaty, beefy men rolling around in skimpy tights. Whatever it is, I sure do enjoy it and even more so the wrestling video games. Over the last 40 years, the games have been more missed than hit, but the ones that were hits were tons of fun to play. Today, we are going to take a look at another Konami arcade game that I thoroughly enjoyed, especially back in the day. The name of the game is The Main Event, and it's a tag team arcade wrestling title which featured a ton of moves and a ton of ripoffs. What was the major difference between the US release and the Japanese release? So put on those skimpy tights and let's get ready to wrestle because this is the history of the main event. In the mid-1980s, professional wrestling, and in particular Hulk Hogan, was running wild. Although the WWF took off in America first, it didn't take long until it was a worldwide phenomenon. Similar to other Japanese companies, the fine feathered folks at Konami kept an eye on America and were routinely inspired by the creatures of our culture, such as movies, TV shows, and yes, professional wrestling. Konami USA executive Frank Pellegrini was settling in for his weekly fix of Saturday Night Live and was instead greeted with the likes of Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Since 1975, Saturday Night Live has been an institution for late night television, but on occasion, the cast and crew would need a week off. Vince McMahon and NBC executive Dick Eversall would create Saturday Night's main event. This wrestling show would air occasionally in SNL's time slot to great success. It still holds the highest rating ever in the time slot with an 11.6. He saw the ruckus that professional wrestling was creating and he wanted to find out what was causing all this. The history of Konami doesn't need to be rehashed again, but at this point in time what they didn't have in their long line of video game titles was a wrestling game. Now sure, the company would go on to create other wrestling titles with varying degrees of quality including Jikyo Power Pro Wrestling 96 for the Super Famicom and also the Boobalicious Rumble Roses with its enhanced physics engine. Mr. Pellegrini wanted to create the excitement and pageantry of that episode of Saturday Night's main event, but also create a fun game to play in the process. As far as licensing the actual WWF wrestlers and brand, out of the question. In the 1980s, Konami usually didn't license any IPs. That's not to say they didn't, it just wasn't the norm. More than once or twice, the team at Konami have been known to swipe images and implement them into their artwork and even their games. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger was their go-to guy when it came to a giant muscle hit in an action pose. Sylvester Stallone would get his turn in Super C, Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania II, and countless others. This definitely wouldn't fly nowadays, but in the mid-1980s, things were a bit more loosey-goosey when it came to copyright laws, especially in Japan. It's unbelievable how blatant they were when it came to the wrestler's likenesses, especially for a title released here in the States. 
the game appears to use digitized images of actual WWF wrestlers only with slight alterations. Just taking a look at the character portraits and sprites and it's very apparent who these wrestlers are based on. Real life wrestlers weren't the only ones to get ripped off in this game as we even get a knockoff of Mean Gene Okerlund on the side of the cabinet. As far as the lovely lady goes, she is nowhere to be found. Perhaps she's locked in a closet somewhere. Mr. Pellegrini wanted to create a fast-paced four-player simultaneous wrestling title with the ability to add more coins on the fly to increase your health and also to increase your playtime. Something else that was crucial was the high-energy announcer. He also wanted to include those dirty tricks that the dastardly heels would pull off whenever the referee wasn't looking such as choking your opponent or smashing a folding chair over their head. The Japanese version would differ quite a bit which I will discuss in just a bit. When it came time to give his wrestling title a name, Mr. Pellegrini decided to use the inspiration for the game but drop the Saturday night portion from the title and just call it the main event. However, the WWF did use this name for certain shows over the years. The Japanese title Ring no Oja, which translates into King of the Ring, was a total coincidence because at the time, the WWF was not running King of the Ring pay-per-views, although they were running King of the Ring tournaments at untelevised events in an effort to boost low house show attendance. The main event was released by Konami in 1988. This is a one to four player wrestling game in which you and a partner set out to obtain the ultimate glory, the tag team championships of the world. You have your choice of eight wrestlers with each of them separated into three weight classes. The eight wrestlers you can choose from are El Condor who was based on El Kanek, Conan the Great who was clearly Hulk Hogan after numerous return bouts with Rogaine, the Maui Mauler is the Tonga Kid, Kamikaze Ken is based on Ricky Steamboat with surprisingly no modifications, San Antonio Smasher, who is Coco Beware. Saturn Six is Road Warrior Animal. Bigfoot Joe is King Kong Bundy. And Alan the Empire is clearly a Ginger Andre the Giant. All of the wrestlers have the same base set of moves with each one having a few unique signature moves. After selecting your wrestlers, the commentator announces the team, and then it's showtime. This is a tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first the combination in the corner to my right at a combined weight of 522 pounds, the Maui Mauler and his tag team partner, Kamakazi Ken. Their opponent at a total combined weight of 537 pounds, Conan the Great, El Condor. In the North American release, there are only two buttons at your disposal. An action button and an attack button. These buttons will definitely get a workout because this is a button masher through and through. The arcade cabinet featured a giant action button which would flash whenever you were in a position to pin or grapple your opponent. The three weight classes available are cruiserweight, heavyweight, and balanced. The cruiserweights utilize fast, agile moves such as drop kicks and brain busters. Heavyweights use more powerful but slower moves such as pile drivers and bear hugs. And the balance moves include a mixture of both classes. The gameplay is fairly simple with moves being divided into five types. There is a standard attack which is usually a punch kick or chop while in front of the opponent. Once you do this a few times, your opponent will become staggered and he will begin swaying back and forth. This initiates grapple one moves such as body slams and hip tosses. 
Once the opponent receives enough damage, Grapple 2 moves can be performed, such as the aforementioned drop kicks and brain busters. At any point in the match, you can go off the top rope, but each weight class has a different aerial maneuver. The last type of move available is the signature, but the wrestlers have to be positioned correctly to perform them. These include the dreaded Camel Clutch and the Figure 4. While in the submission moves, you have to hammer the buttons as quickly as possible to make your opponent submit. You also have the ability to Irish whip your opponents into the ropes to deal out even more devastating moves. On occasion, you might just feel the need to let the dark side flow through you and choke and bite your opponent. The unique thing about this is that you have until the count of five to release the hold, otherwise you will be disqualified and the match is over. Sometimes the action will spill to the outside and you have until the count of 20 to make it back in, otherwise you are counted out and the match is over. If your energy is low or you just want to change things up, you can always tag your partner in. Konami does throw the player a bone because after each successful match, you are awarded bonus energy. You can attempt a pinfall whenever your opponent is down, but sometimes his partner will come in and attempt to break up the pin, which can get very frustrating. This happens a lot more frequently the further into the game you progress. Your opponent's partner can also come in and break up submission holds. Obviously, the more damage you take, the quicker your health depletes, but even if you get pinned, the game is not over if you have remaining energy. You are granted an immediate rematch, which will continue until you either beat your opponent or finally succumb to your injuries. You have to make it through 15 wrist-breaking matches to win the championship of the world, at which point you have to defend the title with the difficulty cranked up to 11. The announcer will introduce each wrestler before the match and rattle off each move's name as it's being performed. It was really cool to hear, especially in the arcades back in 1988. This is a tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first the combination in the corner to my right at a combined weight of 547 pounds, the Maui Mauler and his tag team partner, Conan the Great, their opponent, at a total combined weight of 465 pounds, San Antonio Smasher, El Condor. The graphics are detailed and colorful, but the animation is a bit choppy. In between each match is a close-up shot of your tag team in the ring. Something. Ah. Good teamwork. Missing, jumping, knee drop, drop kick, hey, your brain damage, backbreaker, pile driver, he got me, good teamwork. The Japanese version was known as Ringu no Oja, or translated into English, King of the Ring. As I mentioned, all of the in-game combatants are based on real-life wrestlers. If you needed any further proof, check out the Japanese arcade flyer. The big change in this version is that instead of two buttons to control the action, you have three, including an attack button, tag button, and a dedicated button for grappling, making it much easier to initiate these. Also in this version, you do not get to select which wrestlers are on your tag team. You are stuck with Conan the Great and Kamikaze Ken. You also only have to wrestle five matches to win the championship, at which point the game is over. In Japan, there was only a two-player dedicated version released, whereas in America, only a four-player dedicated cabinet was available. 
the same announcer can be heard briefly voicing all the action in Konami's hockey game, Blades of Steel. Face off! Get the pass! C-H-I is on the wing! And also, the boxing game, The Final Round. This means that all three games are a part of a shared universe of games, which is known as the Konami Game Universe, or KGU. The game's music was included in the Konami Game Music Collection Volume Zero CD, which was released by King Records in Japan in 1989. If you play this game on the MAME emulator, there is a sound test you can access. There are close to 180 samples in the game, and even though I have been playing it for almost 30 years, most of these I had never heard. Even the crowd hurls all kinds of insults at the various wrestlers. I waited my whole life to be called a panty face, but what I do in the privacy of my own home is my own business. Hey, panty face! I guess with all the other sound effects and action going on in the ring, I just miss them. For example, there are tag team moves somewhere in the game which I have never been able to use, but the announcer calls them out. I'm going to scroll through these fairly quickly if you're curious. Feel free to fast forward. Come on! He got me! Hey, Penny Fay! Come on, you jump! Hey, Penny Fay! Dumping! Jumping knee drop! Elbow smash! Side headlock! Headlock! Body slam! Hip whip! Karate chop! Shoulder throw! Shoulder attack, clothesline, backbreaker, neckbreaker, knee to the midsection, jamming in the midsection, choke, biting, Boston crab, figure four leg lock, drop kick, camel clutch, brain buster, bear hug, pile driver, atomic drop, big body slam. Picked him up like he was a pencil. What an impact. Flying knee drop. Flying body attack. Double body slam. Double drop kick. Double headbutt. Duplex. El Condor is in trouble. Due to the game's limited popularity, there were no conversions released for this game. As far as I'm aware, the only re-release the game has received was for Microsoft's Game Room for the Xbox 360 in 2013. And there you have it my friends, a look at the only arcade wrestling game to be released by Konami. This is more of a curiosity than anything else, but it does provide a look at how lax the copyright laws were in the 1980s. It shouldn't be that much of a shock that Konami ripped off real wrestlers for this game as they have a proven track record of doing so. Although they tried to simplify the controls for the North American market, which they later rectified in the Japanese release, the game still has a bit of a learning curve. Not only are the controls a bit stiff, but the game is insanely difficult. Once the bell rings, your opponent is on you like stink on a skunk, and a lot of times, they will get you cornered, weakening you up and knocking you down, and there's really nothing you can do to stop it. It also gets very frustrating when you are trying to pin your opponent and their partner keeps breaking it up. The game itself would be surpassed a couple of years later with Techno's WWF Superstars and the rather spectacular WWF WrestleFest. If you've never had a chance to pile drive your opponent all the while being called a panty face, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. 
If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.